Ida followed the students to the common room after classes. She loved learning about other species, but was grateful for the break. At the student interview, her heart nearly exploded talking to her first alien. The prospect of studying with dozens of species from across the galaxy was irresistible. Now she was here. Even after weeks, the thrill of being so close to aliens was as fresh as the first day. The interviewer cautioned her about cramped living conditions, homesickness, and cultural misunderstandings. The first two were never problems for her. The cramped outpost gave her more time to watch the aliens up close. And her species was naturally introverted, so homesickness wasn't a thing that could affect her. But the third was a real problem she still struggled with. The first time she saw it, she scurried to her quarters, listening, and afraid to come out. There were no screams. When she returned to the common area, there were no signs of violence. Later, no one spoke of the incident, as if they didn't notice or didn't care. Running away was not how a future cultural attaché behaved, so she promised herself that next time she would force herself to watch and learn these new and frightening cultures. She scanned the room and calmed herself. Everyone was eating and talking in small groups. Everyone, except for the human professor, who always sat by herself in the corner. Dita knew nothing about humans before coming here, but all her classmates had different reasons for hating them. They didn't look intimidating, but no one dared offend a human. Dita loved to talk with other students, but sadly, the other students said little, before moving to another table or avoided her altogether. Her body was much wider than the others, leaving little room at her table. And talking to her required patience. She could only make whistling sounds, so talking with her required, waiting for her calm to translate. She picked up a tray, and followed an Ersusion to one of the food dispensers, where he stopped a few steps away from the machines, while the Vulpine in front of him scrutinized the menu. As he waited his turn, the massive Ursusian kept looking back at her. Was this an invitation to meet? Hello. My name is Dita. Before the calm made a sound, the Vulpine turned and flailed her arms, sending food flying. She landed on her backside and scooted away. Dita knew it had to be hard, standing on only two legs. But the number of times her classmates stumbled was shocking. The towering Ursusian's shaking paw pointed at the machine, as he stepped back. You go ahead. He didn't give his name. Did she make a mistake in the social dance? Thank you. She turned her cuticular plates to imitate a smile, and hoped he would smile back. He didn't. Or was that strange eyelid twitch, a smile for his species? She didn't think she could copy it, even if she had eyelids. The machine was placed too high for comfort. She reared back on her hind legs to get her ID card near the scanner. Printed food didn't taste right, but the alcoholic beverages from every species more than made up for it. When her tray was full, she looked for a place to sit. There were two empty stools at a table, where Marmac, the Felician, sat talking to a canid. The fur puffed out on their bodies when she placed her tray on the table. Marmac smiled and motioned to Dita with a paw. Rax, meet Dita. She's from the galaxy's first arachnid species. Pleased to meet you, Dita. If he smiled, she couldn't see it as he lapped at his drink. An ear-splitting bark erupted nearby. An Anurian and a Castorian were clutching each other in their arms. Dita wobbled on her chair as her legs instinctively rose in a protective stance. As the seconds wore on without violence, she wondered if this touching wasn't an attack. She forced her legs to relax. What's wrong, Dita? They're touching. Her screech had her table mates covering their ears. Dita pointed with a front leg at the pair. Marmac turned her head to watch. They're just hugging. What's the big deal? They aren't going to kill each other. My kind don't touch unless. Marmac glanced at Rax with her teeth showing. They're friends. Dita wasn't sure if this display of teeth was a threat gesture or a smile. Rax's ears twitched as he watched the loud pair before returning his face to his drink. If he didn't react, she guessed it was a smile. 
As quick as it started, it was over. They were quiet once more. No violence, both were smiling. There was no word for friend in her language, but that enigma was what drew her here. The more she learned about it, the more she wanted it for herself. How did one make a friend? Would touching be required? Could she touch someone, or be touched, and not want to kill? She couldn't make that barking noise. Was it important? As much as she loved learning about other species and their cultures, this was terrifying. Does this hugging hurt? Of course not. Marmac's ears twitched. It feels nice. Doesn't everyone know what a hug is, or a pat, or a kiss? Pete radiated through Dita's carapace. I don't know these words. This is a pat. One of Marmac's hands brushed the fur between Rax's ears. Dita shuddered. She envied the other species. They could turn their heads and not see or simply close their eyes. She had 360 degree vision and couldn't close her eye. And this is a hug. Marmac threw her arms around Rax and pulled his upper body toward her. As if in reflex, his arms wrapped around Marmac and they inclined until their heads rested on the other's shoulders. Ida flinched but did not pull away. Both aliens were smiling. A painful tingling sensation radiated through her pedipults as she imagined warm alien arms around her cephalothorax. This is a kiss. When Marmac pressed her muzzle to Rax's, Dita's legs launched her off her stools and onto the floor. With great effort, she returned to the table. Every eye in the room was on her. Is that a mating ritual? No. Marmac's eyes were wide and she shook her head. Well, it could be. But not necessarily. The rest of what she said was lost to Dita. Terror filled her at the thought of alien teeth being so close. No. This friend thing was not for her kind. She scooped up her tray and dumped it in the nearest recycler, then hurried to the doorway. Then she remembered her promise to overcome these fears. Even if her desire for friends was a mistake, she still needed to understand. She sat in the corner of the room and watched. After a few minutes, the others forgot she was there. There was a soft whistle. Dita didn't recognize it at first, but then realized, someone said hello. The human professor looked down at her. You speak my language. A few words only. Very hard. It took concentration to make out the teacher's words. The teacher smiled and switched to standard. Hi. My name is Teresa. Please join me. And pointed to the chair beside her. Dita took a seat at the teacher's table. Humans are not very intimidating. Why is everyone afraid of you? The teacher was quiet for a moment. When we first went to the stars, many worlds were at war. It was not long before one attacked us, and another, and another. It seems that we have no rival in warfare. Everyone wanted us as an ally, but we remained defiantly neutral. So, as we expanded, they allied against us. It is strange how the greatest peace the universe has known is in fear of us. When you introduced yourself, you smiled and didn't do that thing with your eyes. Eyes. Dita was too nervous to explain. Ah, I understand. The other students are afraid of you. Afraid of me. Why? They are bigger, stronger, and have teeth and claws. I'm not even venomous. Fear of spiders is instinctual in most species. If they were afraid of her, could any of them ever be her friend? Was she doomed to live in disappointment? But you aren't afraid, are you? I have the same instinct, but I don't let my fear control me. Just like what you are doing now. I saw your fear the other day, and today, I watched you overcome it. I have not seen such promise in any of these students. You will be a great diplomat someday. Not just for your own species, but for anyone lucky enough to meet you. But, I failed. I can't do this. Mastering your fear doesn't mean it is gone, just that, it does not rule you. Each time you fight your fears, they will grow weaker, and your mind will grow stronger. It seemed, the human only heard the words of the translation, and not the desperation. Seeing other species is hurting me. Nonsense. 
That's why we bring all these different students together to learn and be changed. It can be painful, but it's a good thing. No. Dita waved her pedipulps. Not a good thing. It was probably impossible for this human to understand how deeply troubling this was for her. Perhaps, this desire for a friend would pass, like an illness or a bad dream. Or perhaps, she could experience the other species virtually, and never have to risk the more disturbing cultural aspects. The teacher's eyes bore down on Dita. I am not good with your body language, but you look upset. I knew, this would be harder for you than the others. But you can do it. There's strength in you, even if you don't see it. But it hurts. I want to stay, but I want to leave. This was as much as she could say. She let the silence stretch between them, struggling for a few more words, but none came. What did you see, that upset you so badly? That was a safe question to answer. She explained, why seeing people touch upset her. The human's eyes narrowed. But you are more upset now, than before. What did you learn today, that made it worse? The human was not easily eluded. If everyone is afraid of me, I will never have a friend. Just saying it lifted a weight from her mind. The teacher's slight smile gave her hope. I can't live among them like that. It is better if I return to my world and hide from the rest of the universe. A human smile melted away. Tell me everything you saw, everything you learned, and most important, everything you felt. The words poured from Dita. Sometimes, she forgot to wait for the calm, but the human seemed to understand. The teacher was still for a minute, then stood. Come with me. Was she being sent home? Where are we going? To a quiet place, away from student eyes. The human opened the door labeled, Teacher's Lounge. Inside were all the same furnishings as the student lounge, but more decorative, and the lighting more subdued. A few teachers looked at Dita, but no one objected to her presence. Please sit here on the couch. Would you like some food? Dita was too nervous to speak. The human sat next to her. Are you comfortable? Dita lied with a nod. The human sat close beside her and held out a hand. Now, place your claw in my hand. What? No. Dita tried to scoot away, but the armrest blocked her. Do you think I want to harm you? The human still held out her hand, expecting her to comply. No. But you don't know how this affects my kind. We have very strong instincts. The human breathed deep. You're right. I don't know what this would do to you emotionally, or if you can control your instincts. You could do some terrible damage to me with your fangs. But I trust, you won't intentionally harm me. And I assure you, that you're in no danger from me. You said you trust me, so put your claw in my hand. Dita looked at the other teachers, expecting them to put a stop to this. Some watched. Others turned away. Perhaps, they were too afraid of the human. It might be painful. And if she couldn't control herself, she might hurt the human. Or the human could accidentally hurt her. I won't force you. But you need this. The human's hand did not move. I can help you, if you let me. But you must overcome your fear, like you did today. It was only her claw touching another's. A claw would grow back. Bracing for pain, and to defend herself, Dita's claw hovered over the human's hand, close enough to feel its warmth. Almost by accident, she touched the human. There was no explosion of anger in her, and no attack from the human, nothing but delicious warmth. Her leg muscles strained, holding herself ready to flee, yet maintaining the slight contact. Gradually, she relaxed. There. The human gently raised and lowered Dita's claw. This is a handshake. It's used by strangers or friends in greeting. When the human took back her hand, Dita felt relief, but also joy. She touched an alien. None of her sisters would believe this, when she told them. And maybe she could live among aliens after all, if some could overcome their fear of her. She might eventually find a friend. Now brush my hair with a claw. It's called petting. The human leaned her head closer. Touching the human's hand was enough. Is this necessary? I think it is. The human stood. 
But if this is too difficult, we can stop. Maybe, we can try again another time. No. I think I can do this. Dita raised her claw near the alien's head, but hesitated. Is this a mating ritual? The human laughed. No. We humans love to give pets to furred species, but don't care to be petted. Petting is part of a mating for some species, but most use it to comfort the receiver. She didn't react when Dita ran her claw over her hair. A human raised her hand. Do you want to be petted? No. She hissed, causing the human to jerk back. I don't think so. She whispered. The human studied her, then stood. Now, wrap your forearms around me and pull me close. This is a hug. Dita waved her pedipulps in terror. To touch with a claw was one thing. Something this intimate was unthinkable. No. I can't. When the human defiantly stood her ground, Dita wailed. It's too close to fighting. I'm afraid. The human didn't relent. I know. The human whispered. Don't be. Dita stood, reared back, and raised her forelegs, but couldn't move. A human stepped between her outstretched forelegs. Dita's hind legs trembled as the human slowly reached out and placed its arms around her cephalothorax. Dread filled her, but there was no pain. Slowly, the warmth of the human's arms lulled her fears and her forelegs closed around the human's waist. They stood there for the longest minute Dita ever experienced. The human moved ever so slowly until they pressed against each other. Dita's legs gave out, but the human supported her. This is a hug. It's reserved for friends, never acquaintances. The human's scent was pleasing, and the warmth of her body was intoxicating. Dita would never have stopped, but the human slowly pulled away. Only an hour ago, she thought, she'd never experienced these things. Then it struck her. You said hugs were for friends, never acquaintances. I did. Dita almost couldn't ask, afraid of the answer. But are we friends? We both took a great risk and overcame our fears because we care for each other. That is the very definition of friendship. Then, we are friends. She squealed. We are. The human stopped smiling. Now, there is a thing called a kiss. You can look it up. I'm sorry, but it is a bit too intimate. Whatever this kiss was, Dita didn't care. Instead, she reached out and gently took the human's hand in a claw. The human didn't pull away, but let Dita direct her hand to a place beside her pedipulps, an area with many nerve endings, but not too sensitive. She pressed the human hand there and brushed it against her carapace. It was intoxicating. The human stepped closer, placed her other hand on the other side of Dita's head, and brushed. Dita folded her legs beneath her and would have fallen asleep had the human not released her. Do not speak of this to the others. I promise. But why? Your classmates have friendships, but they are based on a pleasing appearance or shared desire. Those friendships will soon fade. But you have something many of them will never have. A friendship based on the beauty of your soul and shared sacrifice. The human was quiet for a moment. Do you still want to leave? Never. Never, my friend Teresa. Good. Are you okay now? Dita nodded. I am very good. She stopped at the doorway. There is something else where humans have no rival. What is that? Compassion. The author's name and the link to original text is in the description. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video.